I know what you're thinking. I want to make a web app. So I'm going to need React. I'm going to need Prisma on the back end to talk to a database. I'm going to need Apollo to talk from the front end to the back end. I'm going to need Jest so I can write some tests. I'm going to need storybooks so I can design code and uh, test my uh, components in isolation. I'm going to need Webpack to glue this whole thing together. And I'm going to need Babel so I can compile, transpile ES6 down to ES5. That's the web app. But I'm going to need to figure out how to deploy this thing. Maybe it could go to Netlify. They're really into Jamstack. Maybe it could go to Vercel. They've got a cool triangle logo. What about Render? Maybe then I could use containers and get long-running requests and GraphQL subscriptions. Or maybe I need the full power of AWS. I haven't decided yet. In any case, I'm going to need some kind of authentication. So I could use Auth0 for that. I'm not going to write my own. Got to go further than that, though. I also need authorization. So I'm going to need some role-based access controls. And what about logging? I'm going to need really good logging. Send that to the provider of my choice. I'm going to have to code to split this thing so the browser doesn't get too much code at any one time. I'm going to need OG tags, so this thing will unfurl on Twitter and Facebook. Got to have pre-rendering probably in order to do that. And I'm going to need Excel accessibility right out of the box. So this thing works in screen readers. All right, let's do this thing. Mm, that's not really how it works, is it? It's more like this. All right, Google my old friend, create React app. Okay, there you are. What's this? There we go, npx create React app. All right. Oh, what am I going to call this thing? Um, Globnox? That works. All right, we'll let that do its thing for a while. Let's learn how to use Prisma. Okay, Prisma, here we go. Nope, not that one. Nope, not that one either. Aha, found you. Yep, here we go. Prisma docs. Quick start. <laughs> All right, in this page, you will learn how to send queries to a... Okay, great. All right, this is gonna take the rest of my life. But despair not, because I'm here today to tell you about Redwood JS, the full stack React app framework of your dreams. Now, I know what you're wondering, who's this bozo telling me what to do? Well, I'm Tom Preston Werner. You can find me online at Mojambo on Twitter and GitHub. In the past, I've created such companies as GitHub and Chatterbug, best place to learn a foreign language. I am also very active in open source. I created Jekyll. I wrote the Semver, the semantic versioning specification. Toml, the configuration language used by a variety of packages. And Gravatar, the avatars that follow you around. Now, getting back to this screen, remember all these technologies? These technologies are awesome, but you don't necessarily want to think about all of them. In fact, Apollo is great, but really, when I write an application, I want to worry about GraphQL and not really the intricacies of Apollo. And I also really don't want to worry about Webpack or Babel at all. In fact, I want to focus my attention on writing JavaScript or TypeScript. That's what I'm here for. I'm a programmer. Let me write code. That's what I do. And so a Redwood application is going to be broken down into two sides. Very simple, a very simple uh, model to think about. On the web side, you have your React application. This is where you think about your testing with Jest and your storybook. Those happen locally, but conceptually, they really are part of the web side of this. And then on the API side, you've got an uh, implementation of a GraphQL API that uses Prisma and a bunch of JavaScript or TypeScript to create your services, your business logic, that is going to talk to your database and do what you need it to do. In between, you've got GraphQL that talks back and forth. And GraphQL is how you make queries and also how you specify the queries and mutations that are going to happen. But enough chit chat. Let's see some code. I have here on the right opened github.com slash redwoodjs slash 
example to do. This is a simple to do application written in Redwood that I thought I'd run you through a few things and show off how Redwood works and how it thinks about the world. So I've cloned this down to my local machine. I've run yarn, you can see the instructions here, and I've uh, initialized the database. So it's all set up, ready to go. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is run yarn redwood dev to spin up the web server. This is gonna spin up both sides that I talked about before, both the web side and the API side, the front end and the back end, link them together and fire up a new browser window with my to-do list. So I'll show you how it works. I can say I need to order some milk and some cheese and some eggs, and I can toggle these things on and off. And this is talking to the backend via GraphQL. You can see here in the logs, the posts to the GraphQL backend. So how does that work? Well, in the editor over here, you'll see the web folder and the API folder. This is a mono repo structure. So these are each separate packages within a single Git repository. So let's start where everything starts, which is with the routes. So in the routes file here, you can see that we have a router and within it, we have a route for the homepage and a route for a not found page. This is essentially the 404. So this is our homepage. And in Redwood, we have another uh, directory for pages and it's very easy to find things, very organized, the directory structure. So this is the homepage. This uh, app is using styled components, which you'll see here. Uh, and it's just standard React. So this should look very uh, familiar if you know React. So here we have a wrapper, we have the title, to-do list, and then we have a to-do list cell. Now, Redwood has a really special concept called cells. And cells are a way to declaratively do your GraphQL data fetching. So let's go look at that. To-do list cell is in source components, to-do list cell. So source components, to-do list cell, and here's the file. And how this works is you simply export a, uh, a certain set of um, variables from here, constants, uh, including the query. So you start with your GraphQL query. You just type it out here as a GraphQL uh, query, or it could be, you could have a mutation in here as well, um, which you can actually see here. And then you have different states and you just export these states as components. You have a loading state and a success state. You can also define a failure state and an empty state. Right here, I've just done a loading. It very simply says loading and a success state. And so what this does is really simplify and focus you on what you're building. So in this instance, when this query completes, whatever the query name is, the GraphQL query that you're doing, in this case, to do's, that will be sent in as a variable, as a parameter into the success uh, component. And then within that, you can do your work. So this is doing some uh, optimistic updating, which you don't have to worry about too much for Apollo. Um, but uh, right here, you can see that it's just taking the to do's and mapping over them and creating to do items, which represent each of these items here. And, uh, and that's what cells are. So really it's just, just a simple way to think about your data fetching. So you don't have to do a lot of conditional logic. It really organizes the code around that. Now, when you get to the backend, to the GraphQL side, let's see what that looks like. So here's the query, to do's. I'm gonna look in the API side here. I'm gonna look in source, GraphQL, and to do's. Now these we call services. So you break up your Redwood application into different services. This app is very simple. It only has one service, this to do's service. A larger application, you might break it down into different services for the different responsibilities that your application has. So here we see an SDL file that is defined in a JavaScript file. Um, and here's the SDL. So if you've written GraphQL before, then this should look very familiar. This is straight out of the box, standard SDL, so the schema definition language. And here we're defining uh, a to-do uh, object and queries and mutations. 
And the nice thing is each service can have one of these files and they can all be separate. And Redwood will do the hard work of stitching them together and presenting them to the world. So let's look for what we were talking about. To do's is going to return a array of to do items, which are defined here. And when you're normally writing Apollo, you have to think about writing your resolvers and there's a specific way that you do that and they all end up in the same file and it can feel very messy. It feels like a lot of boilerplate. So we've eliminated all of that in Redwood and said, well, let's just match things up by name. And so if you come into the services directory and look at services to do's to do's JS, what you're gonna see here is a constant to do's this is the same name as the GraphQL query, being exported. And Redwood is smart enough to match that up and say, this is the implementation, this is the resolver for that GraphQL call. And in it, we're gonna use Prisma, which we just import here. Um, DB represents the Prisma database. And now we can do any of our Prisma calls on that. In this case, we're just doing a find many. So, a really fun way that we can explore that, as you may be already used to, is with a GraphQL Playground. And Redwood, of course, ships with one of those. And that's going to be at localhost 8911. And we can try this out. So I already have loaded up this uh, the same query that we find in to-do list cells, just the to-do's query ID body status. And if we run that, then we can see that we get back exactly what we expect, milk, cheese, eggs. And everything is as it should be. And really, that's all the code that it takes to do the front end to the back end. So, all right, that's cool, you say. Um, what about doing this from scratch? Having it all there right now is one thing. But uh, what if we want to do something from scratch? Well, let's give that a try. Um, I'm going to close all of these and I'm going to switch over here. And um, what should we implement? I think it would be fun to have a page that just showed me the count of to do's. Maybe, maybe something else needs that for some reason. It's a simple thing to implement. So we have the ability to generate certain things in Redwood. So I'm going to run Redwood, sorry, yarn Redwood generate or just G for short page. And I'm going to call it the count page. I'm going to run that. And what I'm going to see here now in my routes file is a new route has been generated slash count takes that from what I typed in here and it has created a count page for me. So let's go look at that count page. It's also creating stories file for storybook. This is integrated out of the box and a test. This is the just test. Um, so we're, we're beautifully integrating all of these different elements. Right now, we can go look at this in slash count. And here we go. This is just the, the generated page. This is what it looks like. If we make any changes in here, then um, they will be immediately reflected over uh, on the website. So you can you can go back and forth very, very simply and do this. Okay, very cool. Now we need to get some data from the backend. So let's switch over to the API side now. And we're going to modify our SDL file to create uh, a new GraphQL query. And we're going to call it to do's count. And it's going to return an integer, always an integer. I have a uh, Redwood extension installed in VS Code here, and it does some nice things. So here you'll see that it can tell me that this service is actually not implemented. I don't have a, an implementation for this specific query. Um, and, and so this is just a very nice way. Because we do some things automatically for you, we want to also help you see when some of those automatic things aren't going to work properly. So this isn't implemented. Well, let's go implement it. That's in services, to do's JS. We're going to create something called to do's count. We'll do that right here. Export const to do's count. That is going to be a function and it's going to just be db.to do.count. Okay. Well, let's see if that worked. We should be able to run it and see if it worked. And here we go. All right. There we go. See, I added two lines of code and I created all of my GraphQL infrastructure that's necessary in order to get the back end working.
So there we go. We have a new GraphQL query defined, ready to return some data and be consumed by the front end on this count page. Well, we're going to need a cell. We're doing data fetching, so we need a cell. So let's create a cell. Yarn, Redwood, generate, cell, to do's count. We'll let that run. And we're going to find this in components, to do's count cell, right here. Now, it's generated this, and it's guessed what I'm going to write as a GraphQL query, but it's a little bit wrong. Let's make it correct. It's just going to be to do's count, like that. The loading state is fine. The empty state, this is what I was talking about before. These are all predefined. We just change these as we like, an error uh, failure state. And the success state is uh, just going to, by default, just do a JSON stringify on whatever comes out of here, which is just going to be an integer. And that's fine for now. We like that. And now we're going to use this in the count page. So let's see in here. Why don't we say um, to do's count is going to be the to do's count cell. And then we need to import this. We're not using that anymore. So import to do's count cell from source components to do's count cell. And if we come back here before we save this, then there we go. And that's really, that's really it. We did all of that in a couple of minutes. I could, if I wasn't talking so much, I could have done that a lot faster even, but that's front to back all the way on the React side to the GraphQL, all the way to the backside, Prisma to the database, the whole thing with just a few lines of code, a few generator commands. And that's really how easy Redwood tries to make everything that you do. Now, I mentioned before that we have storybook integration as well. So I'd like to show that off real quick. In order to, to get the server, the storybook server running, I'm going to run yarn Redwood storybook. And that'll take a few seconds to spin up. And when it's done, it's going to launch this page. And you'll see here we have the storybook stories for the things that I've generated. Uh, we have the count page, which is generating. And check this out. It actually has some data for the count that's coming back. But that's interesting. 42, where did that come from? Why does it say ID there? That's a little bit weird. Well, the reason that that's happening is that it's pulling it from here. So the count page is that whole page is pulling from this count cell. And one of the things that we do for you, if you were paying attention uh, over here when we created this and I came into this directory, is you'll see this mock file. And this mock file is going to make it really easy for you to see your cells in Storybook because mocking out your data fetching in Storybook is one of the real challenges to getting Storybook working really nicely with your application. Again, Redwood tries to make it really easy for you. And so we have the concept of mocking your uh, data fetching. And in this case, we've just said, we think that to do's count is going to return an object with an ID. You might remember that that was what we guessed you were going to do. But it's very easy to come in here and just say, oh, it's actually just returning a number and save that. And now you'll see that the success state of this uh, updates and indeed the, the page itself will update. So all of these components can use these mocks, the cells. And that means that when you have a page or you have a cell or a component that has a cell in it, anytime you have one of those, if you use it in your storybook, it's cool. It's just going to pull this mock data and it's going to include that. So it's still very easy to visualize your components and work with them without the hassle of trying to think about how you're going to get that data mocked out um, in there. And again, you can very easily now work on the loading states of these things. So to do's count cell has these various states. I might want my loading state to just say, just wait. I can save that. And now instead of trying to be in my app and, and clicking refresh and being like, oh, what did it? What does it look right? Oh, I see it. It's there for like a, you know, a hundred milliseconds or something, even less. That's kind of a pain. And I can go to my inspector and I can make my page really slow. And that's annoying. But that's why we have Storybook. Now I can come in here 
and I can stare at it for as long as I want and I can, I can just, I can make it work. Or the empty state, what does that look like? What happens when I get an error? If I want to make an error happen in my application, I have to go into my implementation probably and add some kind of a syntax error so that it's going to throw some kind of error. No, don't screw around with that. That's why we have Storybook. And Redwood is all about making the entire thing, the entire application development process, end-to-end -end as smooth as it can possibly be with as little amount of work, as little amount of boilerplate as we can possibly make it for you. We have spent so many hours reducing boilerplate and doing integrations of these products, integrating Jest, integrating Storybook, removing Webpack. You'll notice that in here, you really don't see Webpack at all. You don't see Babel at all. Of course, we have some config files for you in case you need to dig into them, but you never have to touch them, really. If you're just doing normal things, this is not a part of your job anymore. Let the framework do the heavy lifting for you so that you can focus on your business logic. Well, what else can Redwood do for you? Well, I'd like to show you something that we released recently that is pre-render, the ability to take any of your pages and specify that they be built at build time, that they be rendered at build time and then statically shipped. So how's that gonna work? Well, let's say you have um, a splash page, some kind of a marketing page that really doesn't have a lot of dynamic content and you just want to build it uh, at uh, render it at build time and make it available. So well, let's do that. Let's create a page that is really just static. So I can run Redwood, yarn Redwood generate page. I'll just call it splash and we'll get that splash page and let's go to it here so that we can see it. And let's find it web source pages, splash page. And in here, we're going to make this, uh, we're going to make this pretty simple. Let's just go with this content. Um, but what I want to show you is uh, how the hydration is going to work when we do this and how easy uh, we make that as well. So let's, uh, let's make this a button instead and give it an on click that is just going to be a function that runs an alert. Hi. And we'll just call that splash because that's what it's already called. And we'll see now that um, we've got an errant. We'll get rid of that guy. Okay, so now when I press this, it says, hi. Okay, that's expected. This is all dynamic. Um, if you turn JavaScript off, in this mode, this is the fully dynamic single page application. I can turn it off. I have a little JavaScript turn off button right here. I'm gonna click it and you'll see no more page, obviously, because React is mounting the entire thing. All the HTML comes from JavaScript and React. And that's not always what we want for SEO reasons, for performance reasons. There are a lot of reasons why we might want to get this stuff generated at build time. Let me turn it back on and you'll see it. So how do you do that in Redwood? How do I tell Redwood to take this page and pre-render it at build time? Well, let me show you. You might expect that it's easy and you would be right. In fact, it's one word easy. All I do is come to my routes file. I find the route that I want to pre-render and I just add pre-render onto it. And that's it. I just did, I, I'm done. That's the only thing that I need to do. You're like, hmm, can that really be true? Can it be that easy? Well, let's, let's find out. So uh, I have this uh, specified now. And what that means is during the build, it's going to pay attention to that and build a static file for that. Um, and so I'm going to show you how to run a build and then you can inspect it. And in, in Redwood, you just run red yarn, Redwood build. And that's going to um, do all the, the steps necessary to, to actually deploy this. This is really what happens during the deploy process. It goes through the website, it goes through the API side, um, and then it has a pre-rendering step. And during the pre-rendering step, it's going to look for any routes that has been specified to be pre-rendered, and it's going to render them. So let's look at the web disk directory. That's where the, this, the website of this ends up. 
and you can see that there's the index, there's the favicon, there's the normal stuff, there's static files, this is where the JavaScript lives, this is where the CSS lives. It's all chunked up, Webpack, right? We did all that for you. All the code splitting and everything happens uh, via that mechanism. And then we have a splash.html page. And we can look at that and we can see that this is the text that we see here. My default route is, etc. And here's the uh, link to me with the button splash. But look at this button splash button, right? There is no JavaScript in this page because it's static. There's going to be no JavaScript. The expectation is that there is no JavaScript at this point. But what we want to be able to do is hydrate that page after the HTML is loaded and, and you have the content on your browser and then layer on top of it using React's hydration, the functionality. So let's see if we can make that work. Well, I can show you how this works by going into the web dist directory and I'm just gonna run serve, which is just web server. It's gonna spin that up. It's gonna copy the URL to my clipboard uh, and it's gonna send me into my app. And unsurprisingly, the home page doesn't work because it is a, a full app and there's no backend. And the error here is I can't find my GraphQL. Okay, that, we expect that. But what if we go to the splash page? Ah, we have our content. Indeed, we do have our content. And now I wanna show you that it's real by turning J JavaScript off. So I just did that. JavaScript is currently off. So when I press this button, nothing happens because there is no JavaScript on this page. But what if I turn JavaScript back on? You'll see that it reloaded, I'll prove it. Reloaded, and now, boom. It's still dynamic because it loaded the HTML and then it loaded uh, React and layered that on. Uh, and that's, that's, a beautiful, that's a beautiful thing. This is how you can get a statically generated pre-rendered page that can still be dynamic but you get all the benefits of SEO because this is what Google's getting right here. Google's gonna see this. So if you have SEO concerns on marketing pages, then you wanna pre-render that. It's one word, one word in your ads file. Remember this ridiculous screen that I assembled before? Redwood has a solution for every single one of these things. All of the stuff in the application, uh, authentication providers from Auth0 to Netlify to many others, a bunch of deploy targets, including Netlify and Vercel and Render and the ability to deploy your API side to AWS. We have so much more in the works to make your life easy. The whole point of Redwood is that we do the beautiful integration for you so that you can focus on your product and what makes your business valuable. If you want some stickers, you can get those on the website. We'll ship them to you free anywhere in the world. I'm really happy you joined me today, and I hope you come and join our community and find this stuff really useful, completely open source, MIT licensed, free for you, you to use. We do this to try to make your life easier. Thanks for watching.